I made a guitar. <laughs> to build a guitar, but before building one completely from scratch, I decided to pick up this DIY guitar kit. It comes with a body, a neck, everything you need to get started. Only problem, I think this is basswood, it's really not such great looking wood. So I decided that I wanted to cover the top in some hardwood veneer. In order to do that, I'm going to need to take off a little bit of a thickness from this body. A, to keep the same thickness of the body, B, because the edges are already rounded over on here. So my first thought was, to take off a tiny little sliver at the bandsaw, but my bandsaw is not this tall. My second thought was to make a router sled, which would have been a great idea, just to take a router sled and take off a tiny little thickness that I needed. And then my friends at Shapeoko sent me a CNC, so I'm going to be using a CNC to take off a tiny little thickness to put a veneer on top of this guitar body. Let's get started. Well, let me back up for a minute. Before I start taking anything off from that body, I need to work on the veneer to figure out how much thickness I should take off. So I started with some scraps and I put them in my CNC and I cut out some hexagons. But don't get discouraged, before I got the CNC, I worked out some ways to be able to cut hexagons without one. To measure for a hexagon in any size wood, you make an X to find a center point and then you take a straight edge and make a line down the center. Then you take a compass and make a circle and you leave the compass at the same setting as it was as the circle and put it at the tip of the line that you made down the half and the circle and you make two lines on either side of those halves. And then you connect all of those lines, all of those points with a straight edge and you've created a hexagon. You just make sure that it's all the same length, all the sides, and you're good to go. The hard part is figuring out how to cut it. I tried using my table saw, setting it at a, a 30 degree angle and using a stop block. I did not love those results. I tried using a miter saw set at an angle and I didn't feel like that was safe. So I found the best way to do it without having to make some sort of jig with a toggle clamper so anything was to um, print out a template and glue it on it then rough cut at the bandsaw. I stayed close to my line but I didn't go on the line so that I could take it to the bench shop sander and sand right up to that line and it worked really well. So now that the CNC was finished doing its job I had my job to do and it was a little bit difficult as you could probably see here. I don't know if this is user error or my the bandsaw needs a tune up or what but it was really hard to resaw to get the hexagons out of here. So I figured I'd help my bandsaw out a little bit and start the resaw on the table saw. These cuts are a little bit dangerous. They, uh, you have to be really, really careful with raising the blade slightly each time, but you just have to make sure not to cut through it all the way, just to leave a little bit there so that the pieces don't fall through. And then you can cut the rest on the bandsaw. It's definitely a lot easier to resaw on the bandsaw this way because it doesn't have to take away so much material. So I just kept plugging away, doing the same process over and over again, using the table saw to start off the resaw and then finishing it off at the bandsaw. Um, some of them were really satisfying because I cut them perfectly where they would fall out and then others not so much. So I just had to clean those up afterwards with a chisel and they were fine. So while I was cutting those, I came up with another idea to cut the hexagons. I went deeper on the CNC and just left a little bit of material at the bottom, and then I was able to quickly get that off at the benchtop sander. And then I, to get a thickness that I needed, I would resaw just the hexagon. And it was also kind of satisfying to watch it happen from this angle. And after cutting a billion hexagons, I had to figure out how to actually glue them all up. So I put them all in a pattern that was pleasing to me and I thought that tape would be a good idea to act as a clamp. And I would just glue them row by row and they would fit nicely, but they actually did not fit nicely when I was doing it row by row. I did not like how it was fitting. There were small little gaps and it was a little bit frustrating. So I went back outside and I went back to the CNC and I cut out a sort of jig that was the shape of, it was the outline of the hexagons. And with this little jig, all I had to do was have one row that was perfect. So I started with the middle and I laid down tape and then I put regular wood glue and then a dab of super glue. The super glue dries super quickly, so it kind of acts as a clamp. And then I really just went piece by piece. I did each one individually using regular glue and then holding it for 15 to 20 seconds with the super glue. It was tedious, but I think that it was the best way. 
After it all dried, I had to figure out a way to surface it. And luckily, I have a friend who has a drum sander. Say hi, Ben. <laughs> Thank goodness for Ben and his drum sander. This would have been really hard to do with my belt sander. Now let's go back to what I was talking about in the beginning of the video, taking off a little thickness of the guitar body. So first I traced out the outline of the guitar on a piece of paper, and I also marked where the holes were, the cavities for all the pickups and all of that. And then I took it over to the CNC and removed a tiny little thickness that was the same thickness as the veneer I made. You could totally make a router sled to be able to do this. After the CNC finished, it was time for me to glue the veneer to it. So I used a ton of glue and a ton of books, um, whatever works, right? And while that was drying, I worked on the headstock. So I printed out this template that I found online. I'll put the link down below. It's for a standard Telecaster. And I just traced the outline and cut it at the bandsaw. The bandsaw leaves crazy lines. So I used a, um, a sander attachment at my drill press to get rid of all the lines. And it works really great. I love using this attachment on my drill press. After the glue on the body was all dry, I trimmed up all the edges on the bandsaw and then took it over to the router table and I used a flush cut trim bit to get rid of all the excess and flush it up to the sides. This was really satisfying to do. It got, just made it look so neat. The only part that I was nervous about was those little tips at the end there and I should have been nervous because they broke off and I was able to fix it with some epoxy and no one knows except for me and you but that's okay. Now remember that paper I traced out before? So now I'm going to use that to mark out the holes for where all the pickups go. So I just used a Forstner bit to start off the hole and then I was able to take a flush cut trim bit in my little trim router and route out for the holes. It was that simple. Like, And now all of a sudden it just really looks like a guitar body. It's, I just, I can't get over this. And after a ton of sanding, it was on to finish. I used something called True Oil, which is a gunstock finish. And it's a tongue oil that you could build up to a really high sheen. I decided not to, but I'll put a link down below to videos that teach you how to do a glass-like finish with this stuff. For the headstock, I decided to use a water slide decal. If you want me to do a full tutorial on how to make one of these, let me know down below and I'll definitely work on making one of those. It just looks so cool to have my logo on this headstock. I just love it. Okay, it's time to assemble everything. I'm a little bit nervous. I've never done any soldering before, so I'm really hoping that this guitar is going to be functional. Um, the guitar kit came with this white pick guard, and I did a poll on Instagram asking if I should swap out with this clear one, and you guys voted that I should swap it out. So that is what I'm gonna do. Um, wish me luck. At this point, it was really just about following the instructions, but the kit that came to my house, there were missing instructions in the box. So after a bunch of Google searching, I found some instructions and I'll put a link down below to the ones that I followed. They also have this guide to where to solder the wires to. Is it solder or solder? Uh, whatever. So um, just an important thing is to label your wires to make sure you're putting them in the right locations. And as I said before, this is my first time ever doing something like this and it was surprisingly easy. So one of the tips that I saw online was to make sure to um, put some tin on the wires before you solder them. So that's what I'm doing here. And it really just was fun to do. I think I'm gonna do some more soldering work or soldering work, whatever it's called, in the future. The hardest part really was to hold down some of the wires in some positions. But other than that, it was super simple. Now that the hard parts were all over with, it was just some finishing touches. Put the audio jack on, put the tuning pegs on, and last but not least, attach the neck onto the body and it's done. Okay, after putting on the strings and messing around with the tunings and everything, I have a functional guitar. Like, I have a guitar that works. I made a guitar. I, I just like can't get over it. Um, I never thought that I would be able to do something like this. I've never soldered before. I've never done any of this before. So it's really just a matter of reading the directions or watching good videos. I'll link to all the videos that I watched down below. And I think now that I know what goes into it, I would totally attempt to make the body from scratch. I would not use a kit. But I don't think that I'm at a level yet where I can make a neck from scratch. So I would purchase a neck. I would totally use the true oil again. I love how it feels. I love how easy it was to apply. And I really like my logo on, on there. I'm just loving it. I, I'm so happy. Um, so just a warning, I'm about to play it for you guys, but I'm really not that great. Um, I don't get to practice a lot, so don't judge. Bye. 